So we've got most of our eye in place now and after much ado I took a break and I've come back to this piece and I've decided we are going to put down, as originally planned, we're going to put our um, watercolour underpainting down first of all. Now if you're going to do this with just dry pencil you just do exactly the same things I'm doing now just take a little bit more care with your placement um, and because what you're going to do is just carry on rather than adding water or any solvent or anything you're just going to carry on building those light layers so still go in there with lots of light layers um, and you're just going to build it up that way so first of all I'm just looking at the colours, the underlying colours in my fur and I've pulled out these, I've got dark indigo I've got burnt sienna I've got burnt ochre kaput mortem um, there's going to be some black underneath the main and in darker areas and I've also got burnt umber there as well at the moment there will be some more being pulled in um, but those we're going to lay greys over the top as well and some ivory um, but first of all we're just going to get some of our main colours down I'm using my Magnus first of all here just, just to start placing in the main if you remember when we first put down this outer edge of colour. Um, so I'm just going to erase some of this pan pastel off the edge here. Take some of that off, some of the stuff that's come over. And take some of that away. Just taking off some of that pan pastel that um, came over the edges earlier on. Okay, we didn't have to do that, but just makes it a little bit easier for our pencils to go down. So I've got my glossine in place there. Flip it over again so it's curling down. And um, we're just going to start to pop in our main. Keep your eyes on that reference photo. Using a light to medium pressure, so about four on your pressure scale. Again, we're ignoring all the texture. We're just blocking in those tones underneath. And remember when we put in these shapes earlier on, we didn't go right out into that flicky fur hair. We just mapped in, embossed in um, like the inner shape lines of the main, 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 <laughs> the main part of the main itself. If you do this with just dry pencil, again, take it a little bit steadier. I can go this quick with laying down the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencil because I am going to add water. If you were going to, say, build the layers up here, you'd then probably go in with your dry pencil here. I'm going to go in with the indigo. But you need exactly the same. You need to start building up um, your layers. You see how rough the tooth is in here, let me just zoom in a little bit, you just see the roughness of that tooth, you need to start building up and eliminating that roughness um, and you can only do that by building up lots and lots of light layers of a pencil. So let me pop some indigo down, so it feels very scratchy this pencil, it's a new pencil. Some indigo in through there. So I use my black as my undertone my dark dark, pop indigo in over the top and I will pop some put mortem through it as well she got a little bit of that mane coming around here I 
in through here as well. There we go and then we'll go in, I'll do it now. Um, we'll go in over the top with, I've got a warm grey two here. We'll just mix a little bit so think about, again, think about your paper as being your palette. So when you add your pencils, here I've mixed black, indigo, violet and then grey. So it's like your palette. So when you add water to that, you'll get a mix of all of those colours combining. So it'll be a, a darkish blacky, bluey red and then in places where I've added some of the warm grey it'll just be slightly softer and lighter but I always tend to put my darkest tones down first then my next darks and my mid tones and then come up through to my lights ok so just pop that mane in there now I'm going to pop in part around the ears as well so again I'll go in with a big black magnus first of all and again where we used our embossing tool to lay down our initial lines that will now play in our favour those lines will show through Try and keep your pencil inside of your outside line, if you know what I mean. So don't take your pencil up out over the outside embossed line. Again, I don't... Some artists take their work... Uh, they work on, like I say, a small area at a time. The advantage of doing this watercolour pencil underpainting is that you can get really good coverage all over your piece in quite a fast time, which makes you feel at the end of the day like, oh, you've got a horse, you've got a horse in place. Um, I'm just going to swap that. I'm going to go in here now with my dark indigo over the top. Eyes on the reference photo, keep looking backwards, forwards to your picture, back to your reference, onto your picture, back to your reference, up to your picture. Some of the burnt sienna now as well. Actually, a little bit of indigo down here as well. Flitting between these pencils now. I've got the Kaput Mortem again now, going in over. I 
still off indigo that went in there. I've got that burnt sienna coming in over the top again. I have got my museum aquarelles on standby for this as well because I'm not 100% happy with how dark this brown is. I will combine them with a little bit more indigo underneath, I think. That's the best way around it. That's the only thing with the Faber Castells is that lacking in the brown, the brown range. So there we go. I'll pop some indigo in there. And just remember, it's all of these colours are going to blend together. And if you've done your colour swatch test at the beginning, your pressure test, also doubles up, doubles up now as your colour swatch test, so that when you add water you know how much pigment to put down. Please do not think you can just take a shortcut and cut that bit out, because that bit, I refer, like I say, on the workshops, the guys who do the workshops know that I refer them back to that colour swatch all weekend. Because you can work your dry pencils over the top of that colour swatch as well. It's, it's for more than one purpose, it's not just a pressure test. Okay, touch as I can put more turn. Just strengthen. hard but please try to ignore any of your texture. We're not touching that texture until we're working on dry pencil. Okay, it's darkening through there again. The only trouble is with this, doing this tutorial, is I need to really keep stopping and taking this back off so that I can keep scanning it at stages. You see literally how quick I am moving. What I want to do is get that pigment down. You can correct anything, anything that goes wrong, you can just correct it on the next stage. It's not a problem at all. So down, coming down here now, lots of indigo. So even pressure. See instantly those embossing lines coming through to help you. See past that texture, remember, just looking for those undertones.
I'm going to see some little blue undertone there. I'm going to put grey over the top as well. But wherever you see the slightest hint of any of these shades, just pop them in. Remember, this is one layer of lots of layers that are going to go down. Sienna over the top of here now. I'm just going to sink away that, that line, that edge of that mane, and fill that embossing line now. There we go. Taking that away. Back to our burnt sienna over the top here. Sharpen up the light dark indigo because it's gone blunt. And again, when I've sharpened it, I then go in with the side the nib so that I'm not pressing and flattening the tooth. If I went in now with a sharp pencil, I'd be crushing the tooth. It didn't matter so much on the eye because we weren't going to, I didn't want to go back in and do about 20. 25, 35 layers of pencil over the top afterwards, um, so it didn't matter as much. Now I'm just wary down here that I've got that line coming down there, and then the horse goes back out there again as well. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing down here yet, because also we lose that part. Um, to the post. It's hidden behind the post in the actual reference. Let's measure that there. It comes up to about here. Quite a stronger shadow in there. Let's cross. Let's keep referring, looking like say if a photo as well, sort of what lines up with what and where on the actual on the different levels, so the bottom of your cheek, that little dent, where does that line up with across here? And sort of come across, and we've got a dark shadow in here. hints of those muscle and vein lines that went in earlier on. Touch of the cut water now going in over the top.
little hint through here, burnt ochre as well, just a little touch. We've got more of it here. And then finally, I'm going over the top now with this with a warm grey, I might go in with a slightly cooler grey down that side actually. Let's try, I've got a cool grey one here, it might be a little bit too light, but let's try. No, that's just right. So again, when this mixes, when I add the water, together now I can already see I need a touch more this burnt ochre in through there. And again if you're just doing this with dry pencil it's just a quick way of getting down a really good base layer into the tooth of that paper. I'm also going to bring in a little touch of sky blue down here as well. I'll probably use more when we come to our top layers, but I want to get a little hint of it in here now. I'll get it through the touches in here as well. Some lovely sky blue actually. Now once you see a colour as well, once it just jumps out at you then. <laughs> A little touches in through there. Back to this cool grey. And also some light flesh. Probably pull in some cinnamon as well at some point. At the moment, there will be cinnamon down and through here as well. Actually, there's a little touch of cinnamon in there. Just put a little cinnamon in through here. I'm starting to see more colours now. I can see some nougat in through there as well now. So I'll start pulling out all the different colours. There you go, there's the nougat in through here as well. And these are all the same colours we'll use later on. If you're just doing it, some polychromos. Just use exactly the same colours as I've used, but in the polychromos range. Um, if you're doing the Albrecht Dura underlayer, um, use the same colours for your top layers as you use through your base layers. Or you can just use your Albrecht Duras for the wet and the dry layers. Entirely up to you. through there. Touch up there on top of that ear. The good thing about this as well, it just seems the speed that I'm working at, it, it, it's fine, you can put anything right with your next layers because of the pastel mat, because we're working on the pastel mat. So this just should help you, if you work at, try and push to work at this speed, it'll just help you to relax a little bit as well um, and not worry quite as much about it's only a piece of paper. What's the worst that can go wrong? 
I know you want every piece to be a masterpiece as well, but every piece is a learning piece as well. So I hope you can just see the colour starting to build there now. I just flick it off and take a quick scan as well. And just take a little bit more. Oops, more. Wrong grey. Take this cool grey down here. some violet in underneath as well. There's some in there already, but I want it where it looks like there's a hint more on your reference. I want it to be a little bit more prominent just in those places. And I'm just here, just sort of following the angles and directions. I can see the lines going in. I know when we add the water, we'll lose that, but at least I've colour placed it in the right direction. More of the blue, a touch of blue down over here as well. There we go. It seems a really long time since I've done a watercolour pencil underpainting, so it's quite nice actually to be doing this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Right up here. All these details that I say will come in later on, just mark them in now. Okay. okay, so I'll stop it there and take a quick scan. Okay, so only one last thing we would do before adding water is um, I'd go in over the top possibly and just to pop in super extra white highlight bits with my white pencil as well and then that'll just lighten up even more some of those some of those areas when I add the water Okay, so I'm going to carry on now down over this area. I'm going to speed up a tiny little bit, um, but exactly the same. We're going to use all those colours that I used on the previous areas, possibly a little bit more ochre and um, some cinnamon. Where are you? Some cinnamon coming in here. Um, got the reference photo of that. I'll put the reference photo up here actually. Got some cinnamon coming down over the underneath the eye and ochre up around the top of the eye. Um, more. Um, of our burnt umber and um, dark indigo over the top um, and the forelock and coming down the front of the face. Okay, so we're going to speed up again now.
Hi everyone, I'm just working on the horse at the moment but I just wanted to drop this little video in um, obviously I've done the pressure test video so obviously you need to be doing that one if you are wanting to work with watercolour pencils to get an idea of the pressure that I'm using and sometimes I'll go back over with the same pressure over an area two, three, four, five times so you can see then the layers I'm putting down one thing I do say in all my tutorials is when you're applying your watercolour pencils try to use blunt pencils so don't sharpen them up super sharp like you would be doing for doing detail work now, the reason I explain it like this is for example if you're working on pastel mat then think about the pastel mat as the texture, the tooth, as being like mountains and valleys so you've got your peak of your mountain and then your tooth dips down into the valley so peak trough peak trough mountain valley mountain valley now if you go in um, on top of one of those mountains with a sharp pencil and you press equally with hard pressure you're going to crush your mountain and push it down so then you're going to have sort of a valley with a bit of a, a raise valley a bit of a raise rather than a nice mountain that you've just took the top off gradually. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> it's the best way for me to explain it. So when you apply your watercolour pencil base and your your next layers when you're colour blocking as well, your first layers of colour blocking with your dry pencil over the top, um, like I say don't have super sharp pencils. If your pencils are sharpened up, if you've made them so just if you've got them super sharp to start with, just go in with them on the side. The further up the pencil you hold it so say halfway up that's less pressure and as you want to apply more pressure you move your fingers down the pencil so hold your um, pencil halfway up just use the side of the nib and rub that on there gently gentle pressure look at my pressure test video um, so sort of like light to medium pressure or pressure three and do it that way but here are my pencils that I'm using for colour blocking at the moment I've just sharpened them but that's as much as I sharpen them. I want a nice rounded nib on them still really so that when I go in one is about the wider the nib that you've got so say on this blue here then I can put more pigment down quicker as well. Um, I don't really want to go in with that blue let me just go in with my now this one is a little my dark indigo a tiny bit it's bluntish but not quite blunt enough so I'm just going to go in here with it holding it halfway up the pencil, light pressure and just using it on the side of the nib okay so that was it, just a quick simple little little um, bit of advice about how not to sharpen your pencils, your watercolour pencils up for your underpaintings or for your colour blocking
So we've now got all of our uh, watercolour pencil down all over, started with our darks, so our black, dark indigo, could put Morton violet, could put Morton up through our mid-tones, we use burnt ochre, we use an indanthrin blue, could put Morton, um, some nougat, um, burnt sienna, touch of mauve, then up through our lights, so a light flesh, sky blue, warm grey, cool grey and a white. So we're now at the point where we're going to add water. Now normally I use one of my Pentel Aquash um, water brushes, but because of the size of this, you can see like the nib is quite tiny, I'm actually going to go in, sometimes I switch and I just use these, they're quite cheap, just giant um, size 11, a bristle brush and a size 3. So I've got some tissue and I've got my glassine paper, just a, a folded up piece that I can slide down as I work. So I always start from right hand, I sort of work top left and I do it in chunks, so I'll do that chunk of dark colour, then I'll do the ears, then I'll do that chunk there, then like a slither here, and I work from left to right, top to bottom, um, so that I'm not dragging or smudging. Now, first thing to do is to put, if you've been working at an angle, with your picture raised, drop it down flat now. I dropped mine down a little but because of the angle of the camera I've got to keep it up slightly so as soon as I finish recording then I'll drop mine flat. It just means that the amount of water that you're putting on, if you put on quite a lot, it stops it running down the page. Um, got my reference photo here next to the actual piece so I'm going to keep referring back to the reference photo. So I'm going to switch between so if you're going to use your water brush pan, literally, don't squeeze it ever over the actual piece or on the piece. Squeeze it off to one side, then squeeze basically to clean off the nib, wipe on your tissue, and then squeeze it through so you've got that nib fully loaded before you go in. <coughs> now, one important thing here is you've just spent, I don't know, two, three hours if not longer, carefully placing all of your pigment exactly where you want it and mixing and layering. Um, on your piece. You do not want to go in now with your brush and start moving it around. You're not painting now. All you're doing is that pencil has a binder in it. Like your Polychromas has an oil binder, your Pablo's has a wax binder, your Prismacolors have got a wax binder. This has got a wax type emulsifier binding the pigment together and when you add the water all it does is it simply dissolves that binder and releases the pigment into the tooth of the paper. So, don't go moving your um, the pigment around now. You just want to be sweeping down with your, pe um, your water. I'm just going to go in here and all you're doing is activating that pigment by releasing, dissolving the binder. I'm just doing all of that ear first of all. And if you've got an area that's light in colour, like there, whatever you do, make sure you clean off your brush before you go back in to your next sweep. There we go. I'll switch to the bigger brush in a minute, but just to get these ears done. I wiggle sometimes as well, it just sort of pushes the pigment into the tooth as well. I'm cleaning off in water every time, because obviously I'm not using my water brush. If you're using your water brush, you'd simply squeeze through. And you can already see there the ears really activated. So let's just go in here. I sometimes leave a tiny little line in between. Um, an area that I'm adding water to in the previous area. I don't know why, it just sort of stops, I guess, any chance of that 
pigment then bleeding into the previous area, it's as simple as that. I tend to work quite quickly with this as well because I don't want um, an area totally drying out and then I come in next to it with a wet brush because you can get something I call like a cauliflower effect and it will bleed out and it will leave like a tide line. Right, I'm going to switch over to the bigger brush now just to sweep down at this side. Okay, and this is a huge brush. So, as you can see, all I want to do is add water. Dissolve that emulsifier. as simple as that. Much easier than watercolours. <laughs> okay, so... Just keeping an eye on my reference. So I want to make sure that I'm following the lines of the horse. I didn't want to then sweep that around down here part way. I want to make sure I'm following the contours. So here we can come around this neck. I feel like the brush is getting dirty or carrying dark pigment onto the next layer then I will clean off but at the moment that is looking good. Okay. So I'll just do this chunk here and then I will go back up and start sweeping around that face. So where are we here? Okay. Just following the natural lines of the horse itself. There we go. And this might sort of scare you the first time you do it because it does it does go quite intense, but when it dries, because we leave this to dry overnight, that's one strict rule. Always leave it to dry overnight. Don't be tempted to go and rush back in. That's one of the most common mistakes. People get in touch with me and they say, oh, my pencils won't stick, I can't get anything to go down. And usually it's simply because someone's been impatient to get onto the dry layers. They felt it, they think it feels nice and dry, but this is, the pastel mat is, um, like a cork cellulose fibre that has been sprayed onto the backing paper. Um, so if you imagine cork, how much liquid that can hold, and obviously the surface might dry, um, but underneath it's still holding a lot of liquid that you might not be able to feel to the touch. I've done that here. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just keeping track of where you've been as well with your with your brush. Let me just sweep that around there. Okay. And see how quick it is with this large brush as well. not moving the pigment around at all. 
and this is where as well you'll find the more time you took putting down your initial pigment, just switching back to my smaller brush here now. Um, just want to do that outside edge. Okay. A little bit of the blaze. find that your pale areas kind of vanish a little bit at this stage. Okay, so all that's left to do now, just make sure I've been in through that, yep. Tiny touch too much going there now. Just take a lift a little bit off. Um, Right, so I just got underneath. We just finished adding the water. Um, it's just a little bit tacky here still. So whilst it's still tacky, this is where you can go back in um, with your pencils. And all you do is literally lay your pencil down, wiggle it a little bit. And if it's tacky still, not wet, but just a bit tacky, this is where you can go in and just release some pure pigment down onto areas if you've if it's lost a bit of vibrancy, a little bit of depth of shadow this is where you can just go back in quickly, see it's gone a little bit too dry up there already just try it there, you shouldn't need to press, see no pressure again up on that pencil, now it's dry too much there already, down here I can possibly, yeah it's releasing fine down here this is just another way, it just saves you a little bit on your layers, um, on your dry layers, if you can get a little bit more pigment down here now. It's usually your, your paler colours that fade really quickly um, when you add the water. So, especially here, I'm going to go in over this area here with my cool grey over the top. One, it'll just push that pigment in a little bit more. And basically all this little bit of work that you're doing here now just means that you'll have slightly less to do on your dry layers. It's just something that comes with time. Don't worry if you don't manage to get this done on your first two or three pieces when using watercolour pencils. This is just to show you that you can do this to save you a little bit of time on your next layers but it comes from speed of being able to apply that water as well and that's just something that comes with practice see here I've lost all of that, see there it's just released that pigment for me beautifully in there, just what I needed it to do Hoping it'll do the same. See, I'm not pressing at all, it's just that dampness is grabbing that pigment for me beautifully. You can just use your finger here as well just to smooth in. I just want to get some on here because I know I applied to the cheek quite early on. Even if you only get this down in a few places, it all helps. Yeah, a bit down through here. So I can feel this drying to my touch. This is good with you. Like I was saying before about having your pick keeping your vents. Get my words out, keeping your pencils quite blunt. This is where it will really benefit you. Um, okay, here I need some. Again, that looks like it's dry. 
drying a little bit too quick. We don't go in with water again. If you want to, you need to make sure you go in with just a damp brush. You don't want to be going in again now with a wet brush because um, those cauliflower effect tide lines that's where you can get them on the pastel mat and they are a nightmare to get rid of. Once you've done them, <laughs> it might be good if you did do one actually but not on a big piece that you're working on because once you've done them then you will do whatever you can to make sure you avoid them in the future. And you'll understand what I mean as well when I say about them. Okay, so working quite quickly, just trying to get this down in as many places as possible whilst it's still damp. I can feel I'm losing it as I'm working. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to manage to get this down everywhere that I want it. Bit of a shame. Still damp there, let's hope it'll grab this pigment as well. So I want to get some of this light flesh in here as well. But this is all bonus work, this is this just getting managing to get some of this in is, is an absolute bonus. It all, all depends as well on environment you're working in. It's quite a warmish day today. I try and keep it quite cool in the studio, especially if I know I'm working with my watercolour pencils because I don't want them drying too fast on me. Because otherwise like I say I lose the option to do this. Which can be quite frustrating. But like I say if you don't manage to get these this little bonus layer in, you can just make up for it when you add, it just means you've got to do slightly more on your dry layers. See there it's not grabbing at all there but over here it's releasing nicely still so I know I can still get a tiny bit more down if I'm quick. is pretty much all it's going to allow me to do. Tiny touch under here. That's good. See, what I might have to do is just go in with the pan pastels over the top there later on. And if you feel, once you wiggle, if, if your pigment isn't releasing, don't force it. Don't put any more pressure on. Remember what I was saying before about the mountains and valleys? Don't do it now because whilst that paper is still a little bit damp you can really really damage it and crush it. So we are just going to have to leave this there for today. So we leave this now overnight 
um, let it dry and then hopefully by tomorrow morning I can come in and start to build our lovely dry layers. Okay, a tiny little bit of pasta I need to pop in there as well, I'll do that in a second. But yeah, we'll be on to the dry layers next.